All right, so today we're working on the Porsche. Um, we'll probably work on a bunch of stuff, but the Porsche is one of the things for this channel, as far as it pertains, we are doing several things. We were doing spark plugs. I'm gonna grab you, put you down here. We had the BMC air filter. This one had better fitting capabilities than the last one. So we have a nice rubber end on it. It's pliable, it's real nice. It has a screw in the end mount in the box and it had good reviews it was like 92 freaking dollars but it's cleanable and that was a big thing and you can spend 30 bucks on non-cleanable or 92 on this one so if you clean it you know a few times it paid for itself and you get a little more noise a little more power all that kind of stuff the next thing we did was grab some spark plugs for it and you guys hear me talk about spark plugs all the time and you could buy these offline, the same thing, for a quarter of the price. However, 99% chance they're going to be fake Chinese copies. So I ordered these from AutoZone. I'm not a big fan about giving AutoZone money, but for the most part, as of this very minute, you know if you buy spark plugs there, they're real. All right? The Chinese have printers that print all the boxes, print everything. You can't tell them apart. Except when you put them in your car and they're not worth the crap. And made in Japan... You know, the Chinese ones say the same thing. These are BRK R7 EIX. So these are the, the highest grade, or one of the highest grade Iridium IX plugs. They should be really good in the Cayman, right? Uh, next up, we have our penis pump. Put your wiener, I put my wiener in there. I'm joking. This is a extraction pump for oil. So this will allow us to hook the hose up to it. That will allow me to extract the oil out of the transaxle there's no drain on it and we can take the atf out of it hopefully if that fits down the hole it should and then we can put the gear oil like it's supposed to have back in it next up is our cabin air filter i noticed in this car whenever i turn the Heater AC on, it blows out, and it blows dust out with it. Sweet, huh? No, not very sweet. I didn't even check it. I safely assume if you didn't change the air filter, you didn't change the cabin air filter. I mean, that's pretty much a, a given at this point, right? So, I did get the charcoal filter. I'll put a link to as much of this stuff in the description as I can. If you guys have a Cayman or a Boxer 987, you want the same thing. This is a man filter. This is CUK3360. And... This is the charcoal, like I said, right? Okay. Okay. Or what I was doing here. I took the edge of the cover off. You guys didn't need to see that. You just seen me do it last video. I'm gonna go in here and zip out. That screw. That screw, put those right there for right now. That allows us to pull this out. We're gonna pull out that screw. I wonder what the deal even was with this. This whole thing pushed out, put back. Ooh, nasty. And the whole thing comes out something like this, I remember, right? It's such a tight fit. I mean, granted, the airbox works good as far as power-wise. But holy crap, man. Like, couldn't you figure out something better than have to almost break it to get it out? Look at all the dust coming out of that. A lot of you guys are saying it wasn't that bad. Say I look bad. <laughs> this is actually a man filter. So that's been in there a while. Look at all you can see. Make sure this damn head can is pointed right. It's just full. It's full, right? Full of nonsense. 
So let's set that there, put that there, put that there. BMC stickers. Not so sure anybody's ever heard of BMC. No offense, though. No offense to BMC. But I can't promise you that I'm going to put BMC stickers on anything. <sighs> Sitting around just looking for stuff. Just looking for stuff. Okay. So this is essentially going to go just like that. Night. I don't want to pull it off in there to be go get the damn floor all dirty. Push the little tabs. <laughs> Nasty ass thing. Get me all dirty. I'll chuck that in there. They give you a different screw with it. Got a different thread. It's got a lot finer thread. Okay. Okay. I want the screw hole up. Actually, before we put that in here, I'm going to look at some. Get out of there, you heifer. The snorkel is right there. I often wonder on this car if you could take, if it's like the box where you could take out the side vents. It has a cover that goes over it right there, but I can't find anything on it. But I guess for today, we're not gonna mess with it. We're just gonna stick it back in there and see. Maybe. So it might be interesting to get in there. Oh, there it is. There it is. There that is. And the K&N was only 60 bucks. Everybody said the K&N was impossible to put in. Snug it up. We'll continue to look in the airbox thing, a funny thing on that. Where I could verify if we remove anything or do anything, it'll actually do some good. We'll do it. Like I said, not a lot of people. There's not a large, I mean, there's a fairly large aftermarket for these cars, but as far as, as far as engine goes, there's a few tunes for it. There's not, it's, below normal of your normal car to be able to modify. So you could do tune, you could do exhaust, you could do the air filter is not really, I think I only seen one guy put a, a factory color intake, but it still stayed inside the air box. And I don't know, you think that you could utilize this side vent to do something with that, or it'd suck air and you could buy scoops for it. But then is it gonna suck rain and lazy crap in there? Well, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Probably for our purposes not, but if you daily drive this car, it might be a problem. All right, let's put the cover back on. 
We'll go after the next one. Okay. Okay, okay. Make sure the camera's on, the camera is running. You always gotta make sure. We're running the frunk. The frunk also needs to need shocks. Like these aren't, shocks aren't bad. But they're not real good. And here it's pretty warm, they work fine. You get out in the cold. No worky. So we'll order those today, actually. Because it can't be at Walmart having all the chicks with the neck tats watching me load my groceries in the frunk and the thing comes out and bashes me in the head knocks me out, right? You're gonna take all my money and take my groceries. Can't be having that. Can't be having that. It's been a while. There's supposed to be a snap there. The snap's not there. That's cute. We're just gonna pull this out. Nothing like the good old frunk. I got two torques with the try T25 is the way it looks. T30s, I should say. How much will the dealer charge to do all this? I really don't know. I would never take it to the dealer, so I have no idea. One thing I could tell you, the battery is an AutoCraft AMG battery. That's cute. Somebody has probably replaced this, but it hasn't been anytime soon. Well, I'm gonna, yeah, probably. Is it dirty? Is it dirty, you ask? It's a bear crap in the woods. Yes, it's just a big block. Look at that. Look at that. We call that gravy in the automotive industry. Butt gravy, whatever. Nose gravy, people sneezing in there. Corona in there. Hard telling, right? Hard freaking telling. This one's also about two pounds lighter than the one we just took out. So there is that. I did, like I said, like I said, children, I did notice that whenever I turned on the heater AC, it blew out a big puff of dust in my face. And I'm just not into that at all. What the hell? What the hell's going on? It's not that hard to get in there. It's just very awkward. Very, very awkward. We got to enter. It's all pushed down. Airflow is going down. That's all correct. It's done all the way to the back. Put that down there like so. Reverse the ends. Air filter is done. I guess let's put up on the lift. Let's do the spark plugs. Hmm. 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 Maybe. Maybe. Can't remember. Got two tens. Covers a little panel. I think it's T25. I think right. that out of there. I'll just put this up here because we're going to put that back in right away. All right. So they got a few things switched around in here. I don't know what you can see. A coil there, a coil there, and a coil there. This is the one. This is a brew one. The middle one, I think it was the aftermarket one. I couldn't find any... I couldn't find any coil packs that I could verify that were real. And so I didn't buy any for it, right? And that's kind of where we're at with that right now. Um, if we have any, the first signs of any kind of issues, we'll put a whole new set in it. I found a set on, I think it was on eBay. It had all six coil packs, all brew and Bosch plugs. I don't really want Bosch plugs for 277. It seemed very cheap. Oh, hold on a minute here. 
it seemed very cheap so i didn't buy it um and like i said not really being the spark plugs that i wanted we didn't go ahead and do it holy crap holy crap breaking stuff right and left Everybody's been telling me all how hard the plug, the plugs and wires are to do on this car. And I say, you know, I'm working on some crazy stuff you guys having, or this is really easy. So I've actually broke my spark plug socket. So we just got a regular five eighths on this. Since it's all sideways, you can use pretty much whatever the hell you please. This would be the hardest one because the way the headers go, this is right in the way of them. Got Bosch, the quad, quad tip Bosch. And they've been there for a while. You can see how it's not burning real good. It's got a little bit of white residue, not really chalky. It's like some of that old Catholic converter residue on it. I mean, they're not bad. They look real, but you really can't tell. In fact, I don't think they are real because you probably can't see it with this camera. See how they're welded along the edges? See all that, that welds like crappy? You probably can't see it on this. Usually that's telltale sign that they're not real. They're Chinese. But there again, I've seen some of them like that, some of them not. So you can't always tell. And that's what makes it so horrible about that. Do we gap these? No, we don't, right? Go right in ever so carefully, ever so carefully. effort <laughs> okay this is the one that's in question it's a B B E O made in Germany this thing's dirty as hell you can tell it's newer Borg Warner yeah it's auto zone shit but I mean AutoZone, I can't really say that. AutoZone sells that. It may not be from there. Borg Warner is not a bad brand, but I've never seen a coil pack from them, so that's kind of sketchy. And there again, is it real? You just don't know. That's the bottom line of it. You just don't know. Well, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute there, big boy. We're jumping the gun. Same way, you can see all the welds. I mean, it's just he really knows. Oh, well, we're gonna go and do them all. We'll come back when they're all out. Okay, so here's number. What was this number six? I think. And you can see this one's misfiring. And if you look at the electrodes, they're not even dirty. It's like, what the hell's even happening there? Something's definitely going on with that plug. You see the uneven burn. I'm just not really sure. I mean, you can't read these very good. So there's four electrodes. You can't see what's going on. So we'll keep going. This one's a little bit more difficult. I mean, but it's probably a three out of 10. That's probably a seven out of 10. And usually a Chevy LS is 10 out of 10. We got to do one of those this weekend. And don't buy those. Those are nightmares. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so we got the plugs done. Here's, let me show you this first. Hold on. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Here's the plugs on the passenger side. None of them really look that horrible. I'm getting a light. But I'm kind of glad they're done. They're out, right? Here's the next thing. Here's what we're doing right now. So this side vent, I just told you guys last clip, 
we pop that out. How this fits in here, there's little tabs right here, right? There's a little tab right there, a little tab right there. That sits in here like this and that clips on that. So you stick a screwdriver, a straight screwdriver between the two lips and you, you pop them apart. Sorry, it says like that. And you pry right in the middle gently, and you take that out. Then on this piece, as the next piece to come out, this piece you have to, it sits like this. You have to pry these tabs up. There's one, two, three, four. Then that pops out, okay? I was gonna do this when I was taking it apart, but I didn't know if it worked. So, you know, I was like, well, okay. So this sits in here, blocks the air box. I can't put it all the way in. This actually sits in there like, no, I was right. That is sitting there like that. This in there like that, that goes in there. These lock in back here. So you just push the little tabs over one at a time and this whole thing pops out and that's the air box cover. And it looks like I need to get some gloves on because if not, I'm gonna have some dirty ass hands doing the MRE videos. We don't want that, right? So I see the snorkel, the snorkel in there. Should we take that out or not? I can see that, I can see the inlet to the air box. I don't know if there's any benefit of taking the snorkel out because I don't want it to be, I'm gonna leave it, right? Because I don't want it to be sucking air from the engine compartment. We want to suck an air out here. We're gonna leave it like that. What we're gonna do, if this will fit back in there, without any drama, I think we're gonna have to do, let's go like this. We're gonna go like this. So usually it sucks air out from down, where's it at? I'm not really sure. It's sucking air from up, I guess. No, sucking air from wherever. It's just like a closed, there's one little hole in the bottom and that's it. We don't want that. We want like, we want some rage going on, all right? Pop that back in. There we are, now we're open, right? I don't think there's like zero chance anything's gonna get sucked in there. If you don't want leaves or anything in it, you could always put some kind of screening on the inside of there, but we'll leave it the way it is right now since we could easily take it back off. And uh, even at the car wash, you're not gonna get anything in there because there's still a drain in the bottom of the box. You can't see it. There's a drain in the bottom of the air box. Anyways, if you ever get anything in the snorkel, it's gonna run right out the bottom. Now we got direct open intake to outside cold air. How come nobody's done this before? Now let's see here. I can already tell it has more power. I don't know if it has more, but it's restored the original power. Probably a little bit more of the filter. But a non-turbo car, you can't expect a lot, right? Do a little downshift action here. serious car is little that's the whole thing it's a tiny little car with essentially 300 horsepower but the airbox mod you can definitely hear the air intake a lot more it wasn't rubber thing is gonna get more power but you could definitely hear it a lot more Could be the gas cap, which I have a new one ordered. All right, let's go back to the house. Let's scan that, see what it says. We're going. What codes we have? Let's read. It's stored. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So still the converter code. We have the angled oxygen sensor adapter on its way. 
I could probably drill it out a little more and, and get it, but the other side has an angle, the 90 degree on it. So we'll do the same thing on this side and that should totally fix that. So there we are. That's gonna be the end of the video, guys. Did we give it any more power? Did we make any more power? I don't know. Did we restore all the power it once had? For sure. Um, probably a, a tiny bit more power with that different filter and with that airbox door delete. So if you have a 97 Cayman, highly recommend those two things. But links in the description for all this stuff. It's gonna be it. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day.